Amen, amen. Get about to, to our bishop and ministers. First Kings 20 and 11. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that put it off. And Matthew 12, 43, 44. When an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. You may be seated. Amen. So 1 Kings 20 is regarding uh, the king of Syria talking to um, king of Israel, king Ahab. And the king of Syria told Ahab, hey, I'm coming to take over your land. I want you to give me your, your gold, your jewelry, your wives, your children. And King Ahab said, that's fine. And then King Assyria came back again and said, hey, I'm going to send my servant down. He's going to walk through your houses. Whatever is pleasant in your eyes, we're going to take that also. Then he said, wait a minute. He talked to his elders. They said, don't do it. So King Ahab said, we're not going to do that. And so that's when um, King Ahab said, and I like this version better, New King James Version. He says, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. To me, that is such a profound and such a hard statement. Don't boast before the war has been won. We get so caught up into, oh, I'm going to do this. Think about boxing. You guys watch boxing, some of you. But before the pregame fights, they talking all this stuff to both. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Blah, blah. You know, they're just going back and forth. But in somebody's heart, it's like, I don't know. This guy's kind of good. <laughs> There's some doubt. But after the fight, the winner's the winner. And the loser, the loser. Nobody can boast like the winner. Too many times, us as Christians, we come, we pray, get out of these altars, say, God. Help us, change us, touch us, strengthen us, deliver us. And when it happens, we get up and we just walk off. There is a change that God has changed you, but there is not a change in you. You remember when Peter, when God said, when Jesus told him, I've got to go through all this stuff, through the cross, got to get whipped, all this stuff. Not so, Lord. Boasting. But when it happened, what happened? Uh, Mike Tyson said this. He said, everybody's tough until they get punched in the face, right? So when Peter finally got smacked, when it happened, what did he do? He almost lost his walk with God. So when we go through these altars here, we get God delivers us. He, he changes us. He helps us. When it happens and we get up and we leave, we don't just leave. You got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan to succeed, you will plan to fail. Amen. God is a God of plan. He plans everything. Look at the tabernacle. He plans everything to a T. The past couple weeks, the world has been cleaning out, cleaning out with, with Brother Jeremiah, Brother Gifford. Clean out your heart, your life. But also plan. Brother Jeremiah gave us a little sheet. You guys took one of those little things he gave us, little sheets, kind of help you in your spiritual walk with fasting prayer. Start with that. But when you get up on these altars, you gotta have a plan. Start with tomorrow, because tomorrow is coming. If you don't study enough, you don't pray enough, then when trouble comes, you're gonna fall away. A plan, you need a plan to begin the war the next day, tomorrow. And then a plan to, to go the long distance. Because even with the long distance, your plan is going to change. The enemy is going to change his tactics. Are you able to change your tactics? I always know when your plan failed. Because you're back at the altar doing the same thing. The same thing happens again. 
that's when you know your plan has failed. Now, don't quit. Change your plan. Do something else that's going to get you to a place of hires. Start with a schedule, day one. Matter of fact, at night, put your plan out. I got to do this tomorrow. I got to do this. got to do this. When there's a little dead spot area in there, fill it up with God, with reading, with prayer. Those little small pockets, sometimes those are the things that get you in trouble. That dead time. Idle hands, right? The idle hands will get you. And then late night, idle hands will really get you. So make sure you have a plan and stick to your plan. If you continue to do the same thing, you will always get the same results. Amen.